What's happening, War Gamers? Welcome to another Infinity Battle Report, War Core Declassified. I'm joined today by Alejandro, and he and a friend has actually come up from the West Coast, Seattle, uh, just to uh, get a couple games in with us. So we're very excited to have you and your buddy here. Glad to be here. All right, excellent. And today we're going to start off with a couple games of Infinity. So starting off, we have a 200-point game of the, uh, what's it called? The Armory. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that head cold is doing me in a little bit right now. Get, and getting words mixed up. Oh, hopefully that bodes well for me. <laughs> it might. So we're going to be playing the Armory at 200 points. He has his Nomads. I'll be bringing my Aleph Assault subsection with uh, my Myrmidons, as I do like to take. And we're going to see how that goes down. Now, if you guys ever want to come in and get a game with us, first off, we'd love to have you. We love meeting new people, seeing new armies. Just go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge. All the information you need is right there. Hopefully we'll hear from you, and hopefully we'll get to see you sometime soon. Anyway, let's go take a look at the army and the tables. And here's Alejandro's 200 points of Nomads. So why don't you tell us what you got starting from the left. Alright, starting from the left, we've got an inver inventor, the hacker, uh, with a fast band, of course. Uh, then we got a Hellcat as a Boba Fett. We got a Reverend Healer, a Mobile Brigada, a Standard Aguaseo, but, you know, running by Samus, an Intruder, and last but not least, a Zero. Fantastic, and then we have the HVT right there. Just want to point out, there's some really cool paint jobs here. Really liking the Samus Aaron paint job, uh, the uh, from Metroid, and then of course the Boba Fett uh, Hellcat. It's kind of cool as well. So definitely cool looking Nomad Army. And the 200 points of Steel Phalanx. So starting from the left, we have a Myrmidon Hacker. We have a Myrmidon with Chain Rifle, Phoenix Macon, an Ectromos with Boarding Shotgun. Another Ectromos with Assault Hacking Device, and two Forward absorb Observing Thoracites. That's going to be my 200 points. Here's the table we're going to be playing on, so you can see the army right in the middle there. And of course, that will be Infinite Height Blocking Line of Sight. So I think both of us kind of adjusted for that. We don't have a lot of uh, board covering uh, stuff for air roads. So we're going to be getting in there fighting for the middle, and uh, hopefully it's going to be fast and bloody. So we're going to jump right into the initiative roll and see how that goes down. So to start us off, our initiative roll. I have a willpower 15 against your 13. So 12 and 15. So it looks like I will get the choice. I think I'm going to opt to... You know, I'm going to opt to uh, deploy second, I believe. And I'll, de I'll be deploying on this side of the table right here. Uh, how would you like the turn order to go down? Um... Would you like to go first or second? No, I'll take first turn. You'll take first turn? Yep. All right, so we're going to go get deployed and jump right into the game. We are all deployed. The Steel Phalanx has a Link Team kicking around right there, ready to watch the armory. The two Thorakites, one right there. The other Ford Observing Thorakite hanging out over here. We have my HVT trying to stay out of the prying eyes of the Nomads. Then we move to the other side of the table. The Nomad HVT trying to stay on the line of sight of my own Thorakites. We have the Nomads, one of the Aguasils, or is that the Reverend? No, that's the Aguasil. That's an Aguasil right there. Uh, then we also have the Mobile Brigada, the Reverend Healer, another Aguasil. And then a Camo token has been placed on the table. And of course, there's going to be a couple things showing up and uh, possibly causing a bad day for the Steel Phalanx. So we're going to jump into turn one for the Nomads. Now, before we do that, I am going to use one of my command tokens to reduce his primary order pool by two. So he is going to be down to six orders for this first turn. Just a quick correction. That's actually not the Aguasil. That is the Hacker Inventor right there. So I uh, just wanted to clear that up before we started our first turn. And the first order being spent on the Inventor Hacker. What is it you're doing? I am doing the Control Jump. Okay, so going to make sure your Hellcat comes in a little bit more consistently. Fantastic. Order number two, the, uh, what, is, what is this guy? Oh, Deadshot. <laughs> Deadshot, okay. He's but what's, what's the actual model? Uh, he is the... The intruder is going to jump out of his camo state, and he's taking a shot somewhere? Yeah, he's going to take a shot at this guy over here. Taking a shot into Phoenix, okay. Well, he will respond in kind and try to shoot you back. So the intruder behind cover... A plus three range band, so Phoenix is, uh, with camo, Phoenix is actually in the tens because it's going to be uh, plus three minus six, and to hit Phoenix, 
you're ignoring his ODD with your uh, with your uh, multi-spectral visor. Yep, uh, in, a, in addition, though, I do have the, the cover as well. So you're going to be at straight ballistic skill. And you have two shots firing the anti-material. And I will have uh, two shots in my link team to fire my uh, rocket launcher back at you. So I need 10s. Alejandro needs 13s. That's it. I got a 15 and a 20, and you got an 8 and a 12. So right off the bat, that's going to be two solid hits against, uh, against uh, Phoenix. All right, that was the double action. Four <laughs> armor rolls to make. That's a rather rough way to start off this game. So uh, needing 11s or better. Oh! So he does fail to, which unfortunately is enough to not only to put him onto unconscious, but into dead state. So I have lost Phoenix right off the bat. Another order being spent, and the Hellcat's going to try and jump in right here with the assistance of your hacker. Needing a roll of 15 to be successful here. 10! So in the Hellcat comes. Another order being spent on the Hellcat. You're going to try and move her up to the uh, the edge there. That is correct. Trying to get into line of sight of uh, the Spitfire. So there we go. So you can see the Spitfire. Now my Thorkite. Ooh. Gonna have to see if the Thorkite can see her. I don't think so. Gonna have to check that out though. And the Hellcat is just far enough back that the Thorkite cannot see her. So I have no arrow from that one. But the uh, the Mirmidon, who can see her, is going to respond by tossing some smoke. Spitfire's in the positive range band, so plus three for that. However, I do have my ODD against this, so minus six. So it's going to be overall minus three to your ballistic skill. And I'm just going to attempt to drop the smoke. Uh, we'll just drop it right there. To, uh, to block as much line of sight as possible. So I'm gonna have a plus three to this, so I'm gonna need a 16 for my smoke dropping. Good. Four shots needing nines, one smoke needing 16. I will get a 15. And yeah, so we have uh, three successes canceled out and one failure. So my smoke will go down and the Myrmidon remains standing. Another order, she's just gonna move out, peek around the edge there and take a shot at the Thorkite. Thorkite with his 360 degree visor will attempt to turn around and, well, he doesn't need to turn around, but he's gonna try and uh, take her out. As much as I wanna rely on the range of the submachine gun, I gotta try to see if you are just within range of the chain rifle. I don't think you are. Ugh. No, you know what? I'm not gonna risk it. I gotta go with the submachine gun. So before I even measure with the uh, <laughs> the template, I'll, I'll go with the submachine gun and try my luck there. So I'm gonna need nines against you. 15 for uh, me. All right, because you're, uh, you're in cover and I'm in a null range band and you're in a plus three range band and I have no cover, so, oh, I think you might win this round. Nines and 15, so I'm looking for the crit here. So, I got part of a nine. Yeah, part of, I got it on your nine too. And you got four successes. I think my Thorkite is about to go down somewhat hard. And, oh, wow. Actually, I think the Thorkite's still standing. So the Thorkite's gonna still be standing. That was, why couldn't that be Phoenix? <laughs> the one I actually need. So he needs to make a guts check, which uh, he will fail. So he is gonna drop down prone. Final regular order, your uh, your inventor hacker is just gonna do a move move. And now that my Thorkite is down on the ground, there's no one to uh, arrow against you here. And there she will end. And that will take us to the end of turn one for Nomads. So they were able to actually take out a rather important piece of my uh, of my team here with Phoenix gone. So I'm gonna have to see how I can uh, how I can get around that one as we go into Steel Phalanx, turn one. For my first order, I'm gonna bring the Ectromos down behind enemy lines, and you're going to attempt to hack transport aircraft. Absolutely. Okay, so this is gonna be a face to face. I need a roll of thirteen. Uh, she's got a willpower fifteen base, so minus six. She's down to nine. Okay. So we're both going to fail. And I'm going to go to the three 16 inches. That is actually, ooh, that's not great for me. And that's going to bring him right back here to the advertisement. But it is putting him in some line of sight of some shots, which is not what I wanted at all. Uh, provoking some arrows, both from the intruder and uh, I'm pretty sure the mobile brigada as well. The intruder happens to be in a uh, bad range band, but his X-Visor is going to reduce that down to a zero modifier. And the uh, mobile brigada is in the plus three range band, so he's going to be ballistic plus three. So the intruder needs 13s, and the mobile brigada needs 16. Oh boy! So hopefully my uh, 
Hopefully my extra most will make it. Starting with the intruder needing a 13. Oh, that's gonna hit me. And this is the double action, right? Correct. Okay. So let's see if my extra most will remain standing. No, the extra most is dead. So uh, things are not going very well for the Steel Phalanx here. That sniper's getting all the headshots. Yeah, no kidding. We're gonna try that again, spending another order, and this time we're gonna bring down the extra most with assault hacking device. Once again, I'll need 13, and you're gonna attempt to hack transport aircraft. So, hey! Well, think, thankfully my success beats your success. So my Ectromos will successfully make it down this time. Once he's down, I'm gonna spend another order and I'm actually going to attempt to Oblivion your mobile brigada there. Uh, Cause I'm assuming he's gonna be your Lieutenant. So this is gonna be a burst one uh, hacking option for me with 16 damage against your BTS. So uh, here's hoping for a lucky roll. And the mobile brigada is going to attempt to reset. 13 verse 14. 10, 14. So Head you just missed it. So my uh, Oblivion will go off and you now have a BTS roll to make. Need a 14 or better to beat this hacking device? Five. And Mr. Mobile Brigada has been Oblivioned. Was he your lieutenant? Oh, he was. All right, that's gonna put you into a lost lieutenant for your next turn, which is gonna be big for the uh, Steel Phalanx as they try to recover. I'm going to spend another order with the, uh, the Ectromos here and I'm going to use uh, his ability to super jump and move him forward, uh, move him forward four inches. But while he's doing that, he's gonna be blasting you with his chain rifle. <laughs> and I'm moving him forward because I'm actually hoping the chain rifle template will be far enough to hit the camo token there. So he's gonna take a bunch of uh, arrows here. Now, thankfully, there's gonna be some uh, line of sight blocking because of how you've bundled everyone up here. But uh, you know what? If I can even take out one or two of those guys, it will be a good day for me. And as we discussed it, we both remembered that uh, firing is simultaneous, so you would actually opt to fire it while he's still in the air. So uh, you are going to get all three of those arrows against you. Uh, would you like to try and turn your uh, intruder around, or is he happy? No, he's going to stay where he's at. All right. Well, we know the second part of my action is going to be chain rifling, and it will actually hit all three of uh, your units. So uh, whatever, the, whatever the fellow over there is, plus your uh, Aguasile and your Reverend, Moore, uh, Reverend Healer. So that's gonna be three automatic hits and you are gonna be able to shoot me back. Yep. Reverend Healer is gonna need uh, 16s and the Aguasile and the Camo Token are both going to need uh, 14s. 14s. So once you start with the Reverend Healer with a 16, that will hit and that's just a combi rifle, correct? Correct. And so damage 13 armor, I can't remember if it's two or three. And that is enough to drop the Ectromos into an unconscious state. Now you do still have two more air rows that you gotta make, so let's see if you can actually drop him completely and kill him. So both of these needing 14s. Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. So we have an eight and we have a one. So let's see if he's just unconscious or if he's dead. He is dead, but the chain rifle will still go off and hopefully I'll take out one or two of these guys to go with him. And the chain rifle, the Reverend Healer needing 11 or better. Oh, she is fine. The Aguasile behind her. With armor one, she is also fun. This is not right. Yeah. <laughs> and the camo token. Armor zero. Who is now actually revealed. And he will take the wound. Boop. I'm going to spend an order to activate one of my uh, Myrmidons and he's going to move forward four inches, provoking an arrow from your, uh, from your Hellcat over there, which I'm going to assume you're gonna try and shoot me. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. He's gonna respond by just trying to drop smoke on his, uh, on his feet. Hellcat's in the positive three range band, but ODD is gonna reduce that by six, so you need nines to get this off, and I'm gonna need a 16 for my smoke. So I will get the smoke and uh, your shot will fail. So thankfully my Myrmidon continues to survive. Gonna spend my next order now that he's kind of safe, and he's just gonna do a move move and just get right up to the door of the armory. Now, as you can see, we don't actually have the doors there simply because uh, I'm not quite sure what's happened to him. Actually, you know what? He's not gonna move right up to the door because he doesn't want to get into that lane of fire of the uh, of the Hellcat. So he'll move right to there. And then his next order will be to try and open up the door. He's gonna use his second action and, uh, well, he's gonna use another order. And I, as much as I hate to, do, oh, actually, you know what? He's just gonna go right next to the door. He's still in the line of sight of the Hellcat. Yeah, still in the line of sight of the Hellcat there. And he's going to attempt to open up the door with a willpower check. Let's see if he's successful. 
No, that's all good. I'm going to use my last regular order and I'm actually going to activate my Myrmidon Hacker since that smoke is protecting her from the, uh, from the Hellcat. She's just going to move around just to get down to there. And then she's going to activate again and just move a couple more inches down, staying out of line of sight of, of a whole bunch of things. Um, yeah, I think that's what she's going to do. And Makon is going to be revealed to be my lieutenant. Surprise, surprise! And he's just going to stay prone because he doesn't want to be caught standing up when uh, the smoke goes away. And he will just do a move, move, I believe. Yeah, move, move. So he's just going to move four inches towards the edge. So getting him over to there. Staying prone. And that will end the turn one for the Aleph. So uh, I've lost three orders and Phoenix. However, I have put you into a loss of Lieutenant for, uh, for your turn two. And I have taken out, uh, well, you're now down to uh, one order down. So hopefully you won't be able to do a whole lot in your turn two. So let's check out what the Nomads can do. First order being spent on the Reverend Healer. And uh, what is it you're gonna try and do? Uh, just a move, move, make sure she's in base to base. Bloop. All the way around. All right, beautiful. Going to spend a uh, command token to make a irregular order regular, so you can use another one on the Reverend Healer. Yep, she's going to try and bring him back to life. All right. Willpower 14 to bring the zero back up and alive. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm disappointed. He's alive. No Kevorkian today. So the zero is back up to one wound. Going to spend an order on the Hacker Inventor, mm -hmm. and just going to do a move move. <coughs> so four inches over. And then another four inches. To get as close to the door as possible. And that will generate no arrows, thankfully. So she is safe and sound for a turn. Gonna spend a command token to make an irregular order into a regular order. Mm -hmm. And using it on the hacker inventor? Yep. All right, what are you doing with her? Just gonna move her up to the door, make sure she's all the way up there. Excellent. Boop. Yeah, still no arrows being generated. Is she gonna try and open the door? Yep, she's going to try and open the door. Willpower 15 to see if all the doors open up. No, doors remain closed. Now you can use the command token to re-roll that if you like. No, we're gonna hold on to that. All right. Spending another command token, and I believe you have one left after this. Yep. To uh, make another regular order, and you're using it on the hacker inventor. Yep. All right, you're gonna try and open the door again, aren't you? Gonna get it. All right, willpower 15. 13. All right, so all the doors are now open, and because we're gonna be jumping in here, we're just gonna take the roof off. And uh, we're going to let you do your second short order movement. Sure. Now, guys, if we're not allowed to do this, please leave a comment in, uh, in, below the, uh, in below the video here. We're allowing it because everything is supposed to be simultaneous, so to us, it just kind of makes sense mm -hmm. that you would be allowed to do that. So she's now going to try and get in to dominate the, uh, the armory. Just get in behind those crates right there. I will arrow with my Myrmid in there, who does happen to have a chain rifle. Oh, so uh, he will chain rifle the hacker inventor and hopefully take her down. Needing a 13 or better, she's gonna drop unconscious. No! So, so unconscious she goes. And I will remove another order from, the, uh, from your order pool, which actually just makes up for the fact that you got your zero back. But either way, the armory is not dominated. Gonna spend your regular order on your, uh, well, well, the other guy who has an irregular order, your mobile regatta. Yep. And he's just gonna run across and get a line of sight into the armory. Okay, and in the process of doing so, that will provoke an arrow from the uh, Myrmidon hacker who will attempt to uh, pop him with a combi rifle. Hacker's gonna need a nine to hit because in the minus three range band. Nine, critical hit. Oh, so he will just take a wound. He'll go down to one wound remaining, uh, but that is also going to be a guts check that he now needs to make. Never mind about the guts check. He has himself some courage, so no check to be made there. Mobile Brigade is down to one wound remaining as we go into uh, the end of Nomad turn two. Now, they weren't able to quite do a lot here. Uh, they did bring the zero back up, which did get experimental drug yep. for your, uh, your classified mission. So you are currently ahead of the game by one point. So we're gonna go into Aleph turn two and see if I can uh, start evening this up a little bit. So let's see what I can do. I'm gonna spend my first regular order and the Myrmidon's actually just gonna drop smoke right there <coughs> so he can hopefully get into the uh, the building unmolested. So needing a 16? No. Okay, uh, he's gonna spend another order and he's going to do this again. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna use a command token to reroll that. 
Yeah, why spend another full order? He's going to use a command token to reroll that. <laughs> now he's going to spend an, another order to try this again. Oh, good grief. He's going to use a command token to reroll that. There we go. So now the smoke goes down. You know, it only took two orders. And he's going to use a second short order just to get inside. And uh, the intent is to try and get him out of line of sight of the mobile brigada, hopefully. I'm going to spend another regular order. I'm going to do a move move on this Thorkite, which is moving six inches forward. Spending another order, and once again, six inches forward, just for another move move. And now this is the important one. i got to get him to make it harder for your... Uh, your Hellcat to get to him. He's going to do another move move. So he's just going to get around the corner here and just pop right there. So he's out of line of sight of the Hellcat and hopefully the intruder as well. And using my lieutenant order, Macon is just going to start crawling towards the edge here. It's still in prone. And that is going to be a nice quick churn for the Steel Phalanx. So at the end of the turn, the Myrmidon will be controlling the uh, the armory with his mighty 16 points as we go into turn 3 for the Nomads. Now they are no longer in a loss of lieutenant mode, so they're going to get all their regular orders back. So they will be in a position where they can uh, cause some damage. So let's see what they can pull out in their final turn. Starting with the Mobile Brigade as a regular order, what's he doing? He's just going to move up to the edge of that building so he can take a shot on Mako. On Makon? Oh, I'm sorry, your hacker. Oh, the Myrmidon and Hacker? Yeah. All right, well, the Myrmidon and Hacker, I think, will arrow, and you know what? I think she's just gonna try and drop some smoke. So the Mobile Brigada is in the minus three range band, firing into the Hacker, who also happens to have ODD and in cover, so minus 12s. So a one is still gonna be a critical hit, because of Ballistic Skill 13. And she's gonna try and drop smoke, and she's gonna need a 16 for this. So my smoke goes down. Oh! Ooh. Oh! What shenanigans is that? Nomad Get a crit Yeah, Nomad shenanigans. This is why I hate Mobile Brigadas. They always pull out stuff like this. So that will be a hit from the multi-sniper, or the multi-rifle, rather. Now, he realized he forgot to clear if he was using the AP or the shock mode on that. So we decided to roll a d20, and we said even was going to be shock, and we happened to roll a 19. So it's just AP. Yep. So my hacker is only unconscious. Still losing an order from the order pool, but uh, she does have the opportunity to be put back up by Macon, hopefully. But the smoke fails to go down. Gonna spend a regular order, and uh, you're dropping the intruder down a level. Yep. So he's just gonna climb down as a long order. Boop. Another order being spent on him, and what's he doing now? He's just gonna come behind this cover, and then take a shot. So four inches behind, and try and uh, pop out the, the Myrmid in there. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely can see him. Myrmidon is just going to attempt to dodge in response to being shot at. Intruder is going to fire the anti-material mode, so double action against my Myrmidon. He needs a 16 to hit. My Myrmidon will need a 13 to dodge, so hopefully I get lucky. Go ahead and throw your dice down. So two hits. Two hits. I need to roll a 13 here. No! So I am going to take two hits. Armor uh, armor 2 on double action. Uh, yeah, so, so four armor saves. So that's two successful hits going through. Gotta find out if my Myrmidon remains standing. Armor two, what's your strength? 15. 15, so I need to roll 14s or better. Come on, no, no. I almost made it. By almost, I mean, you know, I passed half of them. So the Myrmidon will just drop dead, leaving the armory fair game. So let's see what the Nomads can do to push forward. And it's time for the Hail Mary Pass. So what are you activating? I am activating Reverend Morai healers. Okay. So the first uh, first one is going to be a move move? Yep. Okay. Bloop. So just get our four inches forward. And then two more. Bloop. So that's the first order. Yep. Can I activate her again? Yep. Just keep moving. Okay. Let's see what you're able to pull out here. So two inches forward. Bloop. And four inches forward. And going to activate her again? Again. Okay. Got to get to that armory. It's worth three points at this point. So forward four, and then two more. So not quite in the armory. So, so you have a lieutenant order remaining. I do, I do. And she has been my nominated lieutenant, so she's going to try and get in there. Beautiful. And spending the lieutenant order, your reverend healer. She's going to move. So we're going to get into the, uh, into the armory, thus dominating it. And you're going to throw a medkit at, uh, at your inventor hacker? Absolutely. Beautiful. 
Physical plus three in the range band, so need a 15 to hit the uh, Inventor Hacker. No! Ugh. So she will stand alone holding the armory as we end the Nomad's turn. It's going to come right down to the wire. That armory is worth a lot because we're currently 1-1, one, one, actually. Yeah. So if I can't take this armory back, you will win 4-1. to one. So let's see what happens going into Aleph, turn three. Going into the start of my turn, I'm going to start by dropping some smoke on Macon right there. So I'm going to need a 16 for this to go off. Which will, so that is zero V smoke, so even uh, even your intruder's MSV won't be able to see through it. Although I don't think you would have had line of sight anyway. And he will then uh, use his second short skill to, uh, to get up from prone and move four inches. Which will take him right behind the hacker here. Well actually he's going to stay in the smoke cloud, so I got to make sure he's... Oh yeah, right behind the hacker will still be within the smoke cloud. Going to spend another regular order on Macon, and he's going to toss smoke right there. So once again, needing a 16, and that will go off, which is exactly what I needed. And he'll move forward four inches, which will take him down there and over to there. Now, unfortunately, I placed the smoke in the wrong place, so the Reverend Moy will actually get an air row against that one. So she can go ahead and take that. So with where she was able to see him, Macon would have still been on the stairs, so he's going to get a uh, plus 3 to cover right there, plus his ODD. Mm -hmm. So uh, minus 9 overall, but you're in the positive 3 range band. So minus 6, so you're going to need 7s to hit me. So go ahead and roll that. 5, so it will hit. Need to roll a 9 or better, or Macon goes down, uh, goes to uh, 1 wound. So he is going to drop to uh, no wounds remaining, but he does have no wounded capacitation, which is very important in this regard, because it means I do still have two orders to try and take the armory back. He's going to spend another order, and he's actually going to toss smoke into the armory. So once again, needing a 16, which will go off. And his second short movement will get him into the armory itself. And with that, that is actually game. Because Macon is 38 points to the Reverend Healer's 33. So I was able to pull it out at the end there, I got very close. Thankfully all my smoke went off. So the final score will be 4-1 for the uh, for uh, Steel Phalanx. A very close game. Alejandro, awkward left-handed handshake. That was great. Yeah, that was a good game. So uh, definitely had me on my toes there, taking out uh, Phoenix very early on in the game. And your uh, Spitfire back here made me just continuously think. <laughs> I got, I think I got lucky immobilizing your mobile Brigada. Having that one churn with you and Lost in Lieutenant mode, I think that that's what allowed me to sort of get into position here. So either way, it uh, it was an enjoyable game, a very close game. <coughs> the Nomads almost took out all that uh, the Steel Phalanx had to bring here. But we will have a second game. You can go ahead and click the uh, link below. It will take you to the Vault uh, video for this. If you're not a Vault member, go ahead and click the link anyway. It'll take you to a seven-day free trial in which you can check out all the content we have available. Hopefully we see you stick around because there's a lot of really cool content and we're always adding to it. And as always, guys, happy wargaming.